A team hired by Donald Trump's lawyers uncovering two items with classified markings in a storage unit in West Palm Beach, a source tells CNN. It will provide the feds with the ability to go to a court and say, we need another search warrant. Let us search Bedminster and all the other properties. Those items were immediately turned over to the FBI, the source says. The Justice Department has had concerns Trump is holding on to sensitive government records since finding documents marked classified at Mar-a-Lago in August. It's not a crime. And they should give me immediately back everything that they've taken from me because it's mine. Trump's lawyers recently hiring a team to search Trump Tower, the Bedminster Golf Club, a Florida office, and the storage unit, sources tell CNN. The former president under pressure from an ever-growing pile of legal problems. Not only the federal probe into his handling of government documents. This is a new hoax, the document hoax. But also a sprawling probe into efforts to subvert the 2020 election. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. The investigation into the 2020 election also moving ahead with more grand jury testimony from former Trump advisor Stephen Miller. Simple principle, one citizen, one vote. And special counsel Jack Smith firing off a fresh round of subpoenas to county election officials in Wisconsin, Michigan and Arizona. Investigators seeking more information about communications from Trump and his allies, such as Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell with battleground state officials. Adding to Trump's headaches. We have made decisions that criminal referrals will happen. Sources tell CNN the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol weighing criminal referrals for Trump and a number of his closest allies. The facts support a, uh, a potential charge against the former president. And, you know, the Justice Department, in my view, needs to hold e you know, everyone equally responsible before the law. And all of this comes after two Trump organization companies were convicted just this week on multiple charges of criminal tax fraud and falsifying business records. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg telling CNN earlier this morning that the investigation into the Trump companies continues. Wolf? It certainly does. All right, Sarah Murray reporting for us. Thank you very much. Let's break all of this down with CNN special correspondent Jamie Gangel, CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig, and CNN political analyst Maggie Haberman the senior political correspondent for The New York Times and the author of the best-selling book, Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America. Maggie, you also have significant reporting right now on the additional classified documents that were found. What can you tell us? So, Wolf, uh, th this, th these documents, these additional documents were found in a sealed box in this storage unit uh, that exists in West Palm Beach, uh, about 15 minutes or so away from Mar-a-Lago. And the uh, Trump folks let the DOJ know that they had found this. As we understand it, there was some kind of notification. Whether that is going to satisfy the DOJ that this is everything is really unclear. You know, they, they supposedly searched three other areas as well and found nothing. But given the fact that things keep turning up in various places, I think that the ball is going to be in DOJ's court now to try to decide whether taking their word for it is enough or whether to search again or to find some other measure to get people to swear that this is everything. And Ellie, as you know, the former president uh, has had plenty of opportunities to hand over these classified documents. How bad is it that they found more classified material after all of this. Well, Wolf, it's truly mind boggling that even after all the chances Donald Trump has been given, he still has classified documents in his possession. Just going back through the timeline of this case, even though DOJ and archives spent months upon months politely negotiating with Trump's team, even though DOJ tried the easy way with the subpoena requiring Trump to turn over all the classified documents, even though Trump's lawyers represented to DOJ, we've now given you all the classified documents. Even after DOJ executed a search warrant at Mar-a-Lago, it turns out there's still at least two more documents that Trump's team was holding. And to Maggie's point, DOJ has a difficult decision to make here. Are we satisfied after all the misrepresentations or are we going to have to take even more drastic measures and perhaps execute search warrants at other properties? And Jamie, amidst all of this, there's also the investigations into January 6th. Today, the select committee member, Adam Schiff, as we just heard, he was asked at NPR if he believes Trump committed crimes that could be prosecuted and he said, and I'm quoting him now, yes, I do. So what does that tell you? The committee is not being shy, Wolf. Donald Trump is going to be on, uh, on that criminal referral list. Uh, one of my sources said front and center. The real question is, 
who else is going to be on, on that list? We don't have names yet. Uh, we don't know how many. But uh, a source familiar with the committee's work told me that this is not going to be some wide-ranging list, that the committee is going to be very deliberate. They are going to make referrals for people about crimes that they think they really have uh, strong, substantive evidence to hand over to DOJ Wolf. And Ellie, if the uh, Justice Department ultimately decides to criminally charge Trump, what do you see as the possible charge or charges, for that matter, on what sort of, and what sort of timeline do we anticipate? Well, Wolf, let's remember we're talking about two different things here. We have Mar-a-Lago, uh, and I think in, in that case we're looking at various statutes relating to mishandling of classified information and other sensitive documents. Also, potentially obstruction of justice for misleading investigators about whether they still had classified documents, as we just discussed. When it comes to January 6th, I think if I had to forecast what will likely be in the criminal referrals that Jamie just talked about, I think they're going to be focusing on obstruction of Congress, the effort to try to block Congress from counting up the from counting up the electoral votes, and a conspiracy to defraud the United States of a free and fair election. And one of the points to Jamie's point, it'll be interesting to see whether the committee specifies specific criminal laws that they say may be implicated here. And Maggie, uh, what are you hearing from inside Trump's orbit? And you've been doing a lot of reporting on this as these multiple uh, criminal investigations heat up? Well, if there's a lot of concern in particular about the referrals that might be coming from the January 6th committee, there's a lot of wondering among Trump's aides, who might there be? Is this just going to be about members of Congress? Will there be staff involved? Will there be threats to Trump advisors? This is a crush of you know various legal threats that most aides are worried, not just that they're going to impact Donald Trump himself and his candidacy, many of them are worried about what's going to happen to them. People feel like they have gotten swept up in this when they didn't really deserve it or whether, you know, they had tried to, you know, go along with something that Donald Trump wanted and they feel like they have become targets. So that's a big source of concern. Huge source of concern indeed. And, you know, Jamie, like Maggie, you've been doing amazing reporting on all of this. What do these latest developments mean for the U.S. Justice Department and a possible indictment? Look, we don't know yet, uh, obviously, what the Justice Department is going to do, but I think the fact that they found these two classified documents, from my understanding, sort of covering this from the beginning, we've been told that there were more than two things still missing from what the National Archives expected to get. So, you know, just because they found two more things, you know, just as, as Maggie said and Ellie said, uh, my understanding is that they believe there is more out there. And, and that's going to be, as, as Ellie said, the next decision. Yeah, well, and I think when, when it comes to a criminal referral, if you're the Justice Department, I think this could cut either way if you receive a criminal referral. On the one hand, the more people, the more authoritative voices who say, hey, there is evidence on which Donald Trump should be charged criminally, you start to get the American public used to this idea, which is a foreign concept to us. We've never had a former president who's been indicted, and, and I think there's some consideration of that. On the other hand, it does make an indictment look, in some sense, political. It will allow Donald Trump to say, well, look at that. Congress recommended an indictment, and then DOJ jumped exactly as Congress said. So there's an interesting political dynamic at play here. Ultimately, DOJ is going to really want the evidence, and I do believe DOJ will make their decision based solely on the evidence. Uh, we'll see what that evidence is. All right, guys, thank you very, very much.